down below. Thank you so much for supporting Psychic Sid. You will see everything that I am seeing, and today I am doing an astrological reading, and then I'm also doing a reading for you, Virgo. So, let's get right into it. July 28th at 5.31 p.m. Mercury and Virgo at zero degrees. So, you guys graduating, doing something new in your career, something you've never done before. Okay, this is Libra, Aries, Scorpio, Capricorn, current energy comes to be um, going somewhere, like traveling to somewhere that you've never been before. Also, somebody's giving birth. Congratulations on the baby. This is a very, um, this is after a very difficult time. You've also been saying 222. Two, two. There's a large windfall of money coming in. If you're single, there's someone who's in love with you that is a friend of the family. You can also be in love with somebody who is a friend of the family. If are in a relationship there's a large windfall of money coming in you could also be giving birth this can also be like you're going to be able to feed your children's children so you'll be able to provide okay somebody's going to be able to finally provide if you're in a relationship there will also be recognition that if there are things in your partner that you wish you could change this is really just stemming from your own lack of awareness of who you are so it's like uh, being hyper critical right so because you're going to be aware of this you're going to go about communicating and what is it that you are looking at the details about you won't criticize, right? Instead, you're going to be a lot more receptive only because you knew about this ahead. Okay? Okay, so you're releasing of control. There's a release of control, which is really good for you. August 1st at 2.31 p.m., there's a full moon in Aquarius at 9 degrees. What will be released is if there's any lying, cheating, stealing, deception that was going on in your life. Or even a detachment from something that makes you feel very safe, some form of emotional safety, there's a detachment from it. And then ending um, August 8th at 6.28 a.m. at 15 degrees in Taurus. Okay? So, this is, there's also a recognition that you want in your relationship for there to be a spiritual connection as well. And if there is any releasing of anything negative, you're doing it alone. Okay? Like you're doing it by yourself. Very independent during that time. Very quiet. Not speaking unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, on August 8th, there is almost like a, an ushering out of a chapter in your life that would be very toxic. And a renewal of your self-esteem, what you feel about yourself, your self-worth, your self-value. There's a lot of self-love coming in and a lot of recognition, okay? Being very beautiful during that time, a lot of people wanting to be around you, a lot of people recognizing you the moment that you walk into the room. And somebody deceased is watching over your love life. It's to be like a family member that's no longer living, a colleague, a schoolmate, a sibling, a friend, a lover, okay? Co-worker. Someone who's no longer living is looking over your love life. And August 15th at 12.05 a.m. Neptune will go semi-sextile with Juno. And this is dealing with um, Pisces, 27 degrees. Piscean energy, right, is really showcasing the surrender or what is being released. The recognition of what is, being able to see it very clearly and recognizing that there's a higher purpose behind it. Now there is some benefit that you're seeing in what you've gotten lost in or even what you dreamed about. Neptune can represent your dreams. So what you dreamed about, you can easily what get lost in it, right? Like you have a dream, right? You have a dream. But you can get lost in it where it's almost like you're never able, you're never truly able to manifest into the physical reality. Right? Because there's a whole bunch of 
karmic lessons, a bunch of lessons that you have to learn in order for you to get to that dream or manifest that dream. Sometimes you can even get lost in the lesson, right? And so what's really working in your favor is that you are now seeing the benefit in the lessons. You're not getting lost in the lessons. Spirit is taking my nose. It's not that you're getting lost in the lesson, but you're seeing the benefit of the lesson. You're surrendering to the lesson. You're surrendering to what it is that you have to learn. Recognizing there is no control in this. There is no details in regards to this. I'm telling you, I'm not talking about some details. Okay, that is Virgo energy. Virgo rules the hypochondriacs. It rules people with OCD. People with all the details. So it's that every single, you know, plan before it's actually executed. When it comes to Neptunian energy and us looking at lessons, one thing that we can learn is that we don't always see these lessons coming, but we can always surrender to learning the lesson. Because that's why we're experiencing it in the first place. Now, there's also the hyper-focus of when we say God is asleep, why is God asleep, right? You're like, oh, well, you know, God exists. God absolutely exists. Whatever you believe in spiritually, it absolutely does exist. If you don't believe in anything that doesn't exist, that, then that's absolutely what's correct and right. What we're speaking of is when we look around here on Earth, and we say, okay, if Jehovah has created all of this, that so we can feel, see, taste, and touch. If you got rape going on over here, molestation going on over here, people get beat, people doing this, people doing that. There's chaos, right? There's chaos. There is the God that we believe in, the God that forms in the womb, even though we did not know. We believe that we have some purpose done here on this earth, believe that we're supposed to be doing something. Right before we were in case, the physical matter by Jehovah. Capricorn, Saturn energy. Before we were encased into it like living, breathing stars down here on Earth, where is the God that we believe? In? Right? That God is asleep. And you're like, well, why are they asleep? You tell me why they're asleep. If God's inside of me, just like God's inside of you, why is God asleep? God is only as awake as we are awake, as we choose as individuals to be awake. Being able to see the godliness, not even in just ourselves, but in others around us, even when it seems like all you see is chaos and destruction or difficulty, right? That is recognizing my God. On some level, and also surrendering to what must be learned. Not necessarily pulling into the sense of sadomasochism, which that Tony energy can actually fall into. The Bible occurred during the age of Pisces, and you know, fuels that idea that oh, you must suffer in order for you to be rewarded. It's more so about saying. You can still dream. Even when you feel like you're experiencing lessons that push you to have to take action or look at yourself from a new sense of identity or pushes you to act from a more animalistic sense of self. When we say here on August 15th at 1239 a.m., Saturn was semi square chiron dealing with Pisces energy at four degrees. Still with the foundation of what are you putting work into regarding your dreams? The dreams that you have, you put work into them. And then knowing that that work pays off to create what is. It's not necessarily that the dream is something that doesn't exist yet, though it exists because you saw it, so it already is. It's not something you're trying to make or create. It already is. If you say it is, if you decide to be it, if you are it, this is difficult. This is a wound that you have. A wound.
rules regarding the things that you put work and time and energy and effort into and you being recognized for it. You being seen. How you put work into your dreams. It is, a, it is something that you struggle with. And now you're stepping into a place of being able to help others, teach other people how to move out of a place of stagnancy due to your own toxicity, right? When we get stuck, because we're toxic, because there's things that we have to heal, right? And you of all people, Virgo, are able to see what's toxic in other people because you are self-aware enough to look at what is toxic within yourself. Jesus being a Virgo, being put in the Pisces age, is just kiss. Putting somebody who is able to teach that if you want to walk on water, you can too. You want to turn water to wine, you can too. That you don't have to rely on the church and, you know, donating to the church and giving to the church and believing that you must be perfect, which is what was being taught. Why was that being taught? Right? It was being taught because Jehovah teaches, right, that this is perfect. All this stuff is perfect. This laptop, this MacBook is perfect. This turtle cage is perfect. These cards are perfect. Everything is perfect. That's what it teaches. Right? But us as human beings and souls, we are imperfect. Now, how can this be perfect if it's not real? Right? Talking about a sense of perfection. Now, why, why was that even being taught? It was to stray away from the idea and the concept that what God would allow such treacherous things to occur on the physical plane. Right? So if that's the case, then that would be meaning, right? If we are made in the same likeliness and, and image of God, the God that created us in the world, that, that form is more we can know what he, that means that God is as well unperfect, like imperfect. That we are imperfect. That gods and goddesses are imperfect. That is waking up. Waking up to your own sense of imperfection and saying, that is okay that I am imperfect, and I will learn from it, and I will grow from it, and I will help others the best way that I can. That is breaking away from, you know, the, the things that we can feel sometimes that are actually real. We are taught to believe that it is real, so we wake up every single day to do things that we really don't want to do. The people that don't want to evolve, that would prefer for you to remain in the matrix in order for you to remain a part of their big scheme, right? Like your boss. Without you doing your job, they don't get paid. Forget your happiness. Forget what it is that you want. Forget what it is that you believe. Whatever. They wouldn't get paid. If you woke up today and you said, hey, none of this is real. This stuff isn't real. You wouldn't sacrifice your health, your happiness, your health, your joy, right? For these things that you were told were perfection, but you're not even real. That is breaking away <laughs> from Jehovah. That is also waking up. That is you awakening. Okay, it's taught in many, um, many different spiritual practices that I've been trained in and even in this year, but under. But um, on August 15, you have 3.29 p.m. general enters into Leo at zero degrees. And yes, a part of initiation is me doing this. For free, pretty much. Me spreading information and knowledge and wisdom and using my gifts and my gifts for good. For free. So I have to always make sure that the way that I'm spreading the knowledge and the awareness to help other people break away from the matrix or break away from what is traditionally taught, it has to be done in a way that everyone can access it, much like Jesus did. I mean, it doesn't matter if you are a prostitute or a drug addict or an alcoholic or a doctor. 
tax auditor or you are whatever the church may deem as unacceptable, the message still goes for you too. You too deserve to be enlightened and aware. And astrology is taught to the wealthy. It's only given to the wealthy because the wealthy believe and are the ones that can afford to believe that they have a future. I do this here at Psyche City to help spread awareness to people who maybe can't afford my services. And because I was initiated and I have to do it for free in some way, some fashion, and I found my own way of doing it. After I was given all the information and initiated all that. August 15th, if you are a masculine energy, you are aware of who you want to be your wife and who makes you happy. You are aware of which type of confidence you would like your partner to hold in marriage. Which you would like for them to maybe even aesthetically look like, sound like, um, dress like. You are going to be funny. Humor is important to you. Um, this is also, you can be getting engaged. This is something that's never happened before. It feels like something that's never really happened before for you. You can also be a wife. Something about your children will become very significant during that time. You're also seen as a very amazing mother. Or if you don't have children, but you're in a relationship, your love literally extends your partner's life, like lifespan. And you're very fertile. You can own a business that you treat like a child or like a baby. August 16, 5 30, 8 a.m. is a new moon in Leo at 20 degrees. There's an ushering in a baby and a child. It could be a birth. Or um, you could rap, dance, act, sing. There's something new happening in some of those fields for you. Spirit is tickling my nose. There's also something really new coming into life that makes you very happy. Okay, your relationship could be feeling emotionally very happy and satisfying during this time. Um, after a period of maybe difficulty, there's balance. If you are single, then um, whoever you're talking to romantically would like to be friends with you before they get into a relationship with you. If you're in a relationship, there's like a newfound joy in that relationship and in that partnership and in that connection. Let's get right into your tarot reading. Virgo. Hi, Virgo. Welcome to Psychic Sisters. Virgo. My personal assessment. Um, thank you so much for supporting me. Make sure you have your voice in the description box down below. How are you today, Virgo? I hope all your dreams are coming through. What's the future for Virgo? What's the future for Virgo? Really? Oh my god, that's actually a really good reading. Okay, you have High Priestess, Moon, and Virgo. Love it. It's beautiful. Temperance, Sagittarius, Pisces, Sophie, and then you have the Emperor, Aries, Scorpio, Taurus, Leo. They could be any sign. So they could be any astrological sign, whoever the masculine energy is. And energy is the Moon, Cancer, Pisces, Sagittarius. Um, officious energy can also be done with a Capricorn or an Aquarius. Okay. If you are a feminine energy and you're in a relationship, you are being catered to in that relationship. The masculine energy feels very responsible for you. Responsible to make you happy. Responsible to always give you whatever it is that you need. And is always willing to cooperate. Feels a lot of emotion for you that um, but with the moon, it's there. It may not always be so obviously shown based on the fact that with the emperor, they've been in experiences in their life where um, at times when people were so focused on emotion, responsibility lacked. Okay, so they've been in experiences where there was times where people were so focused on their emotions that they became irresponsible. So they have a very balanced. <laughs> that was my full purple Terry dog, Roka, who's on the bed right now. Um, they feel responsible for you, and they are aware 
that in times where the sole focus was emotion, people became irresponsible. So they have a very good balance of feeling emotion, but also being very responsible and aware and in control. So here you could be older as well. The uh, high priestess is a younger feminine energy. Okay. And many people are, many people desire you, but feel like they cannot have you if you are a feminine energy. And if you are single and you're a feminine energy, then there are commitment issues. Okay. Um, you have a tendency to be drawn towards relationships and um, connections if you are single, right? You are drawn towards people where... It never becomes an official relationship. It starts off emotional, and then it, it just never becomes an official relationship. Or it starts off physical, then it just becomes emotional. And it never becomes a, a, a real relationship. Right? You remain single. Um, you are very curious about things that are very controversial. It's a lot of purple. So you are curious about things that maybe are not the typical, not the norm. You guys could be going to an oracle healer or someone who reads oracles or someone who's involved in spirituality, philosophy, psychology, religion. Okay? Being open to learning something new creates flight. If you see this as like a butterfly, it creates transformation. Um, temperance always comes after death. Meaning, by you being willing to learn something new, you change, you transform. You could be going to a tarot card reader, a psychic medium, a seer. Many people look up to you. There's also emotional fulfillment through work. Okay. Many, if you're in a relationship, you feel like this relationship teaches you to better love yourself and your significant other feels like it also teaches them to love themselves as well. You guys are opposites. Opposites have attracted. It's almost like the water finds its way. Almost like a magnet. Finds its way. Almost like walking on water. Yeah, walking on water. Being well, you have a card that's full up. Being willing to learn something new. If you're a masculine energy, you're being willing to take on more responsibility. So the hidden energy is the diamond ring, and you have wine. The number 25 can be significant, the number 4 can be significant, which is all about your foundation. If you're single, somebody has a crush on you. And rather you're in a relationship where you see somebody works the night shift, you are a masculine energy, you're, you're wanting to take on more responsibility in a relationship. Um, you could be becoming a father, an uncle, or a grandfather. The energy is diamond rank, proposal, engagement, agreement, next level, promise, partnership, statement of intent, marriage, union. You could be married or date proposed to. Somebody's ready for a commitment with the emperor here. They want a relationship if you're single. This is a that wants the relationship. If you're in a relationship, then the person you're in a relationship will wait to to the next level with you. Feminine energy is receptive. It doesn't speak unless it's absolutely necessary. Therefore, people place a lot of value in whatever it is that you say. How these people are looking up better. Yeah, so you have wine developing over time, flavor, family legacy, the good stuff, finesse, alchemy, transform, ripening, ripening and age as well. It's like uh, aging like fine wine, you can look much younger than your age, but it's also about um, you could be starting a family, getting engaged, getting married, starting a whole now, new foundation, getting into a relationship, uh, taking your relationship to the next level. This has been your reading, Virgo. Thank you so much for supporting Psychic City. Oh,